So Axel, welcome to this mini talk uh, money week podcast. Um, you are joined by myself, Gabrielle Spenlo, one of the training community engagement specialists at Nudge. And we are going to be talking today about the relationship between employer and employee when it comes to talking about money. So I've invited you um, onto this mini podcast today because, you know, as you know, I went through a bit of a financially stressful time recently and as a result of that we had to have a conversation about money and it weighed quite heavily you know on my own anxieties and also you know my financial pressures so as part of that I thought it'd be really good for us to sort of dive deeper into the world of money and how we can start to create you know open cultures at work and how we can encourage you know employees and employees to have a close working relationship when it comes to talking about the world of money yeah I, look I you know and I think um, thinking back to that conversation that we had, the first thing I'd say is I was just so grateful um, that you know you felt comfortable having a conversation, whether it was with me or with anybody else, and that you didn't carry that uh, on your own. Like we all we all go through moments um, where money weighs heavy on our mind, and it might be a really financially stressful situation, or it might just be a really big decision you know, that needs to be made. And um, I think, you know, like I said at the time, I did my only reflection looking back was I wish I'd created something where you felt like you'd come and talk to me even sooner. And that should be the kind of challenge that we kind of set ourselves. And then maybe that is the challenge of how do we make the culture even more open? So the minute before it even starts causing you stress, you recognize it and you go, do you know what? There's four or five people that I really trust or respect. Um, you know, within the workplace potentially um, that I can go and have this conversation with. Yeah and I think you know we have a great working relationship and we've obviously got you know a friendship as well as a working partnership so it was almost a bit odd for me to have this thing that I felt uncomfortable talking to you about because I'm so comfortable talking to you about so many other different things so even when you feel like you're confident talking to people about money or about different challenges it can still be quite scary to take that first step but in hindsight I definitely wish that I'd have just trusted our relationship known that you know it would alleviate some pressure from me if I'd have had that conversation with you first and then we'd have created that you know culture of having a good chat about it, absolutely anything. <laughs> well the, I, you know, I think op open cultures are just so important anyway we spend so long with each other you know at work whether it's kind of remotely or in person so, you know, you'd hope that, you know, all of our organizations will have a really, really open culture and there's not somebody sat there, you know, worrying about something or not sh feeling like they can share something. And I think the best test or one of the best tests probably of how open a culture is, is, is maybe personal finance. It's, it's still a bit of a taboo subject. It feels a bit awkward sometimes. It's so personal. It's so sensitive, you know, talking about, you know, money, your money, your money situation. Um, so yeah, what better way to test how open your culture is by whether people feel, you know, feel they can talk about this kind of thing, you know, particularly because we know that it, that, I mean, it does cause stress, you know, and it is, it's, money is important to all of us. It's how we look after ourselves, it's how we look after our loved ones and so on. So um, yeah, perfect test for an open culture, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that we had, you know, an open enough relationship and um, you know, that's something that we, we need to try and take forward as far as possible. We're quite lucky at Nudge in in terms of the culture that we have. So we're quite an open workplace anyway. I mean, you and I have worked together for a while now, so we have a good relationship anyway. But even though we had that good relationship, it was still a little bit tricky for you know you to reach out to me or me to feel like I could reach out to you. So I think there still are challenges, even when you've got you know that open relationship and a really strong working relationship. There are still challenges around having those conversations about money in the workplace and even you know it could be anything from going through a divorce or paying for childcare or an illness there are always the awkward conversations that people sometimes have to have with you know employer and employee have you found that as you've gone through sort of your career uh, as an md that you it's been more talked about now in comparison to when you first was an md or is it just sort of trickling in? <laughs> I think like, um, I haven't noticed a massive change actually, or felt like I was having lots of com like personal conversations 
or conversations about personal finance specifically, um, you know, a few years ago uh, and far less today or vice versa. I, I think it probably has stayed relatively consistent. But the thing that you said that's really interesting there was that you and I already had a personal relationship. I often think with these sorts of things, like you almost have to earn the right to have this kind of conversation with someone. So if I expect you to open up to me about anything, you know, then, you know, I, I, it helps if I've got a relationship with you first and you're probably going to be a lot more forthcoming and a lot more honest. Um, you know, if we've got a relationship, it's already a bit awkward. So, you know, you're probably very unlikely to come and have a chat with me about something that's already a bit awkward. If we haven't chatted about anything else, you know, in the last one year, or that, if you haven't checked in with me and I haven't checked in with you to see how we're doing. Um, and so I was just grateful that we probably did have that relationship in the first place where we could just pick up the phone with each other. And when it comes to something like money, which is so sensitive, we could just be open. I think that's one of the key things. It's like, you, you have to work harder at that openness. It doesn't just happen. You say, right, well, let's have an open culture now. You have all of those, those hundred mini conversations with lots of people beforehand. And that just every single little conversation breaks down barriers. And you build, you know, you build real relationships and therefore that open, you know, that open kind of culture. Yeah, I think that's so right. I think it is, it's all those little conversations that help people talk about anything, you know, not just money problems, encourage people to reach out to those that they, they can seek help from. Um, you know, we, communication is obviously key here. Having an open culture is obviously key. But what happens then when that relationship just doesn't exist? Because everyone's different. Some people find it way harder to talk about things than other people. I mean, you know me, I will literally talk to anyone about anything. So for me, it's kind of easy to say, oh, yeah, you know, have these conversations. So what can we be doing to help, you know, everyone open up, no matter how open you are to having these conversations? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting one. Well, I think the thing is, is that maybe, I guess, you can't always have, like I said, the relationship that you and I have, you can't have that maybe necessarily with every single person. But I would hope that, you know, every single person in the organisation has got that type of relationship with a few people, even if it's not me. And, you know, with a lot of, you know, you've got that kind of champion or you've got someone to talk to as a starting point. Um, and, you know, an open culture for somebody might mean being able to come and talk to me um, and, and, I, and, and the leadership team. And I hope we're all really approachable, but it might also mean being able to go and talk to someone from a completely different team or going to talk to you, uh, you know, as a mental health first aider or, or, or whatever it might be. Um, so I just, I just hope that those relationships are all there and we encourage each other to spend time with each other and to have those kind of conversations. Um, and that, and that, the most important thing for me is knowing that, say like whether it's you or me or somebody else, when we're going through one of those particularly tricky periods or if there's something that's creating stress in our lives or that we're really anxious about, you know, if, you do, if it does help to have a conversation with someone at work, then you feel comfortable doing that. And then you've got somebody that you can go, you've got, you've got a group of people ideally that you feel comfortable having that conversation with. And that just kind of starts um, that ball rolling. But that, that was the thing I valued the most, I think Gabs, was n knowing that you and I would have a conversation and that you wouldn't, you know, carry something on your own for months and months and months, as an example. Um, and um, yeah, I, I would hope that for, for all of our people, especially when it comes to personal finances, because that is the sort of thing where you kid yourselves, so we all kid ourselves sometimes, mm -hmm. and we bury our heads in the sand. We won't even have a conversation with ourselves about personal finance, let alone have a conversation with anyone. So personal finance is a brilliant test for how open your culture is, because it is just a difficult and sensitive and very personal subject matter. It almost feels more important for us to be talking about money because we naturally do this as part of all of our job roles every day. So it's important that we don't just overlook or assume that people, you know, are looking after their personal finances. You know, we check in and ask and make use of things like Talk Money Week for ourselves as well, not just not just our clients, too. So speaking of sort of the client side of things, what happens then when employers, you know, don't address poor financial well-being or they're not conscious of, you know, financial well-being in the workplace? You know, can we ignore it in today's world or is it such a pivotal part of 
you know, the culture and the overall well-being of a business? Well, I th we, we've always got this view, haven't we? That, um, and I think it's, I think it really holds true is that, you know, let's say as employers, you know, we've got this unique relationship with, you know, everybody in your team. Um, you know, it's different to the relationship you have with your family. It's different to the relationship that you have with your friends. It is just an entirely unique relationship, particularly as say, we all get paid through the same payroll. We might all be earning the same kind of or see a similar kind of money. We might be living in the same kind of place. You know, you know, at the relationship that we hold is just crucial. So if you were going to say that it's not important to have that conversation within the workplace, then you would just have to be kind of like a, a accepting of the fact that there are certain conversations that could only really happen in the workplace that will never happen. So, so for example, for me, I remember like, you know, growing in my career, you know, with other graduates, um, you know, or even like, you know, having a, you know, a senior manager who was 20 years older than me, like, they were just such interesting people to be able to talk to because they'd been through everything. They were going mm -hmm. through what I was going through financially, or they would, they'd been through everything that I'd you know, been through. And I maybe didn't have lots of those sorts of people outside of work that I could talk to. So I always think that the, the, um, you know, the challenge of not having those conversations at work is that there's all these untapped resources and whether you've got a problem or not, or you just want to make sure you're not missing opportunities, you know, then they're, they're just, they're just too important conversations to miss out on. I like having those conversations sometimes with certain people just to make sure I'm not missing out on something because it niggles, you know, niggles you. If you don't have those conversations for five years, all of a sudden you realize you haven't made the most of your pension. You're not necessarily, you missed some investment, you know, ideas or thinking that you just have never come across before, or, you know, even just the smaller day-to-day -day things, um, you know, around what you do with your, you know, your paycheck, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I personally don't think you can afford not to have those conversations with, um, you know, with your, you know, with somebody with, within your employer, with your employer, I just, it, it feels, it feels like you'd be missing out on too, too much potentially, or you'd always have the wife in the back of your mind. <laughs> I think as well, like you've just said, you know, when we talk about the relationship between employer and employee and the world of money, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, just the bad stuff. Like for example, me, when I went through a financially stressful time, it can just be reminding, you know, employees of the pension opportunities or giving them a little bit of a nudge about the latest, you know, investment deals or giving them access to, you know, financial education so that, as you said, they can make these better, more informed decisions or they never miss those opportunities or they can support their loved ones in the best way possible. And talking about money and sharing tips and tricks with each other, I think is a massive, massive part of well-being at work. I think it's a huge factor. Yeah, that's just that you've got wealth of there's, there's loads of amazing people around you who you spend more time with than you know anybody else mm -hmm. you might spend eight nine hours a day with who are probably thinking or going through exactly the same challenges as you uh, or have been through them all before. So yeah, whether you've got a problem or you're feeling stressed or you're feeling anxious or you just are just wondering what to you know what to do next or wondering if you're missing out on opportunities. I mean. It would be amazing if that you you know if you had some of those people to go to you know i personally would love the idea of being able to go and speak to a friend maybe outside of the workplace go and speak to the family member and speaking to somebody that i really trust at work and who i feel confident opening up to about all of those things and that's probably the way i you know ideally like to make decisions and i weigh up all of those three different perspectives and they all know me in different ways and they've all had different experiences themselves and then I know like any, you know, great idea, you merge together all of the kind of feedback and you kind of see, you kind of make it your own and you, you make your decision based on, you know, the best of everything that's kind of out there. Yeah, I completely agree with that. So I think we can round up our conversation by saying that, you know, start talking about money in the workplace, start talking about money to your work friends, you know, share those tips and tricks with each other create that open culture but that doesn't come without a little bit of hard work from both sides you know have these conversations about anything on a regular basis so that you can open up and create that safe space to talk about money at work uh thank you for joining me it's been a pleasure as always <laughs>
Um, and thank you, thank you so much for the conversation today, Gabs. And obviously, thank you for the conversations and opening up and being a trailblazer for other people as well. Um, it sets a great example, and I hope you know, people hearing that you kind of open up and have these conversations about personal finance and inspire other people's um, other people to do exactly the same.